Fans have returned to Chrysler Center in full force, and we return for another season of Inside Michigan Basketball. Powered by the nation's top-ranked recruiting class, Michigan is hoping to make a run at a second consecutive Big Ten regular season title. The Wolverines have set the bar high and have every intention to clear it as they embark on a long and grueling conference season. We'll be here each week to document the adventure. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. And what an adventure it promises to be. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another season of Inside Michigan Basketball. I'm Ed Kingerski. The Wolverines open Big Ten play with a pair of games this week, including their conference home opener Saturday against a much improved Minnesota team. The Gophers, with a new head coach and 13 new players, still off to a surprising 7-1 start. Early on, Devontae Jones with the fake and take. The grad student from Coastal Carolina gets to the rim for two of his 14. Hunter Dickinson continues to show his enhanced shooting range. Give to Dickinson, 18-footer right side is pure, and Michigan's up 9-7. Boy, Hunter's range has really been impressive as of late. And on the next trip, hitting the top side, Jay. Now Dickinson at the point, long two is airborne and perfect. 11-7, back-to-back, Hunter Dickinson, Jay. Watch this from freshman big man Musa Diabate. He protects the rim by going long lefty with the block. His massive wingspan shutting down the Gophers. Caleb Houston showing his well-rounded game. He leaves it for Houston on the free throw line who finds Dickinson for a two-hand crunch low on the left. Still, this was a tight one. Michigan up 26-23. And then just before the half, Dickinson finds his big man brethren. At the point, Dickinson feed it into Diabate underneath, flipped it up there and got it to go as the buzzer sounds. Michigan up four at the break. Second half, Peyton Willis came out smoking for the Gophers. He takes it strong and finishes at the rack. And then a step back three over Musa. The Gophers up three, they shot 64% in half number two. The Minnesota roll continues. Jamison Battle, Willis's partner in crime, was the difference maker. Five on the timer. Left side, here's a drive from Battle, laid it up and in over Williams, and Williams fouled him as well. Battle with a game high 27. Minnesota led by as many as 16. Michigan mounts a comeback, though. Houston drills a long ball. Got it. Quick little 5 0 spurt, 66 55, Minnesota. Timeout, Gophers. Dickinson doing his part. Bounce it into Dickinson, goes up, laid it up and in, and one coming on a foul by Eric Curry. He had 19 points, 10 rebounds. It was 66 to 60. Eli Brooks then gonna get free and score on the reverse. It's a 12-2 Michigan run, but that's as close as they would get. 75-65 the final. The Gophers win at Chrysler for the first time since 2011. Today's conversation with Jawan Howard is brought to you by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. After they got up 16, you guys got back in the game. What was the key behind that 12-2 run? Well, I would say our defensive disposition changed. Um, where we brought more energy and effort on the defensive end, where we applied pressure, um, we got into a full court press and caused some turnovers. We also went back on the uh, half court and played a little zone because off defensively, man to man, we didn't do a good job of keeping the ball in front. There were too many paint touches where guys were getting downhill, finishing at the basket uh, off a ball screen, or there were times when a ball kicked and then the guy just catch and go and, and we wasn't ready to guard it and, and it got to the layup and, and one or a, a layup there. And, our defense got to do better, and we got to be we got to be more dialed in to our opponents and their and what they love to do and how we can take away from them. Minnesota was extremely aggressive to start the second half. Safe to say, your guys simply didn't match that. Uh, second half, I would say this: uh, we, we was not ready uh, for their defensive energy, and it changed when a team scores 43 points, and we only scored 29 points, and then they shoot 62 percent in the second half. 
And uh, we had some too many defensive letdowns. They certainly made a lot of huge shots. Is it tough for the guys not to get frustrated when they just can't get that key stop? Tough shots, yeah, and they made, they made some shots that was contested. So I want to go back and look at the fam and see how we can get better. You guys certainly struggled from deep. Did you like the looks you got, or did Minnesota kind of take you off your mark? I did. I did like the looks we were getting. Unfortunately, it didn't go down. Um, we shot three for 18 from three. But that's just not, you know, the only thing. You know, looking at some of the paint touches that we got, we didn't finish at the basket. Um, and then also there were some turnovers down the stretch that hurt us. We all know when things go well, it kind of looks easy. What was your message to the guys after a tough defeat? Well, like I said to the guys post game, and I tried to, of course, keep it sweet but direct. Um, exactly what you said. You know, this is a tough lead to win, and uh, you can't expect, I'm not saying we did, that we we're going to come in here and get an easy one. Um, every team in this league is well coached, every team in this league is extremely competitive, and we will learn how to win. But, you know, games like this are, are learning. Uh, situations how and where, how we can get improve as a group. The guys don't play again till next Saturday, but they do have something very important to focus on this week. It's exam week. Well, you know, it, it sounds like you're in the locker room because that was one of the things that I addressed. You know, we have exams week, and tomorrow we have a day off, which is Sunday, and you know, it's important for our guys to get dialed in and get into their books. For some that have exams, you know, projects, papers that are due. Uh, the help is, is there, um, you know, that, that's the most important thing at a time like this. You know, they have two jobs and they understand it. You know, they're student athletes here at the University of Michigan. Uh, they have a responsibility uh, to, you know, live up to that. And uh, we have great kids that understands it. Still to come, what a pair of Wolverine players had to say after the loss to the Gophers. And hear from Heisman Trophy runner-up Aiden Hutchinson straight from New York City. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Welcome back to the show. Big man Hunter Dickinson had a huge first half against the Gophers and finished with his second double-double of the week. Here's what Hunter had to say after a frustrating night at Chrysler Center. You know, it's hard um, when you're not making shots, um, especially threes um, and especially open ones. Um, you know, that's just sometimes how the game goes. You know, you're not going to make every shot. And so, um, you know, for us, it's just a matter of staying confident in one another. Um, Staying confident in ourselves, that's a big thing that um, we need to make sure we do, even though we're not hitting shots, just staying confident in each other, each other and then in, our, in ourselves. I think right now we're just trying to get better um, each and every day. We know uh, there's no championships being had in December. Um, with that said, obviously there's some type of haste to try to get better and not um, go in another four and four. Um, record in an eight game stretch obviously we think we're better than what we're showing out there um, and I think it's just a matter of us um, continuing to buy into the game plan and what the coaches are telling us offensively and defensively and like I said earlier trusting not only um, our teammates but also trust um, having trust in ourselves as well. Did they come out more aggressive than you guys in the second half how much of a factor was that in this game? Yeah I think for sure Battle was obviously playing um, with a lot of energy. He was very active out there, getting the ball and getting to his spots. I think, you know, as a team defensively, we could have came out with um, more energy, not just with our bodies, but I think with our mouths as well, um, trying to talk ourselves into the right spots. But yeah, I think, um, like Eli said, I think we need to be not only more physical, but also just more mentally. Um, smarter on the defensive end and getting in our shrinks, but also our low man as well. When you can't get a key stop in the second half like that, does frustration sink in, kind of like an offense, when, when you can't find the bucket? Is there any parallel there? Um, I think coach always preaches next play, but I think there might be um, some frustration. Uh, I think it's frustration like with ourselves, obviously. You know, you don't want your man to score and when he does, it's it's a little frustrating, but I think, you know, 
just getting back to what coach says of that next play mentality is something that we need to really buy into and something that would definitely help us in the future. Graduate student Eli Brooks played all but 21 seconds in the game, so he as much as anybody knows what went wrong. We caught up with Eli for a few moments outside the team locker room. Just kind of give me your assessment of this game tonight. Um, they made some tough shots. They're a good team. Um, we didn't we didn't do a well, we didn't do a good job guarding them. Um, we let them play freely. Um, I think that was the big difference of the game. You know, we talk so much about offensive frustrations when the ball is not dropping, but when you can't stop the other team, does that frustration seep in? I mean, yeah, it's tough to see the ball go in for someone else, but um, they got whatever they wanted, and it was just because we weren't physical enough. Um, so moving forward, we got to be the most physical team. You guys were 3 of 18 from deep tonight. Um, was it poor looks, or was it just not making your looks tonight? I mean, they were going under on the ball screens. We just didn't make the shots. Um, that was their game, pl game plan, to go under the ball screen and make us shoot threes, and um, we didn't make shots today. For such a young team, what kind of learning experience is this? They've gotten a taste of Big Ten play now and found out clearly there's no easy Ws. I mean, yeah, um, going to Nebraska, being on high, and then coming here, um, having this loss, I mean, it's a learning. It's going to be a learning um, experience the whole season. So uh, just continuing to stay together. Um, there's going to be lumps in the season, but I've got to make sure we're the most connected team. What is your challenge as a leader after a game like this? Um, making sure everybody's on the same page. I mean, um, everybody bought in, um, everybody all in, um, not, not pointing the finger, um, and just being solution-based. Up next, our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Welcome back to the show. The Wolverines started the week with their best shooting performance of the season. Michigan made 15 three-pointers in their Big Ten opener, a 102-67 route at Nebraska Tuesday night, opening up a 20-point lead by the 423 mark of the first half. It was the most made triples by the Maize and Blue since November of 2018. Terrence Williams II was 3 of 3 from deep and finished with a career-high 22 points. Brandon Johns Jr. equaled his career high with 20, and freshman Caleb Houston buried four from behind the arc to finish with 16. Hunter Dickinson was a force. He registered his ninth career double-double with 15 points and a game-high 12 boards. The Mason Blue hit the century mark for the first time in two years. Time for our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Here's Brian Bush. Sophomore center Hunter Dickinson picked up right where he left off late last week with back-to-back -back double doubles. Now three straight against Nebraska and then on Saturday versus Minnesota. Hunter with 15 and 12 in the blowout win over the Huskers, and then he was one of the signs of positivity for the Maize and Blue against Minnesota. 19 points, 10 rebounds on a day where Michigan really struggled to shoot the basketball. Hunter was nine for 15 as he posted his fourth double-double of the season. Dickinson now has 10 career double-doubles. As he's starting to really heat up, that will be huge for Michigan against all the talented big men in the Big Ten once league play resumes in early January. Brian, how long do you think we might expect to see these growing pains? And I wish we had the answer to that one, but it requires Michigan's best players to play the way they're capable of. We've seen it from Hunter Dickinson as of late. He's been able to get the job done in a lot of situations. Michigan will need that from guys like Eli Brooks, Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate. This team boasts plenty of talent. They had a great group come back. They had the top recruiting class in the country. The talent's there. If they can hit some shots consistently, continue to play the type of defense that head coach Juwan Howard expects, then they have the ability to turn this around and to be a contender trying to defend that Big Ten championship. But it starts with the leaders on this team. Hunter, Eli, and others have to deliver. They're certainly capable, but now over the next few weeks, it'll be key to kind of work through some of those kinks. Thank you, Brian. We'll see you next week. On the way, an early season look at the women and our special football guest, Aiden Hutchinson. Coach K 
Kim Barnes Arico and the women's team have raced off to a hot start this season. The 13th ranked Wolverines shared a special moment with their fans on November 13th against St. Francis Brooklyn when they raised a banner to honor last year's historic run to the Sweet 16. Three players are averaging double digit points so far, led by reigning Big Ten Player of the Year Nas Hillman at 20.2 per outing. Our senior class is special and they set the example for the rest of our squad each and every single day. Um, we have four freshmen as well. They're a great group and I challenge them every day to have that character and, and have that work ethic that our seniors have because if they can continue to move the way that our senior class has, our program is you know, gonna do some really incredible things this season and moving forward. The women opened Big Ten play on Thursday. They had won 10 straight against the Badgers by an average margin of 17 points. Well, that trend continued at the Kohl Center. The Wolverines grabbed the lead right out of the chute and never trailed in this one. Nas Hillman led five players in double figures with 21. This bucket off an offensive rebound and a putback. It was a 12 point game at the break. Danielle Rausch had herself a night, a career night knocking down three three-pointers on her way to 18 points. Late in the third, watch junior Isabel Verizhao go to work. She uses the up and under move for an and one, Michigan with a 19 point bulge. And senior Emily Kaiser having the best season of her career added 17 points. Michigan wins 93 to 81, making it 11 straight over the Badgers. Up next, a special night in New York City for a very special Wolverine football player. Aiden Hutchinson. Saturday night, football All-American Aiden Hutchinson finished second at the Heisman Trophy ceremony behind only Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. We had a chance to chat with Aiden moments after the festivities ended. Man, it's, it's such a dream. Um, you know, it's, it's so awesome, you know, being second. Um, I know there's only probably a, a couple of defenders who ever finished second um, in this trophy. And, um, and it's, it's, it's so cool. And I think it's just a, a testament to, to my season and, and, you know, our whole team just doing our thing and, and performing well and, um, you know, just, just being great. So it's, uh, it's, it's really awesome right now. We know your play certainly warranted it, but honestly, going into this, I don't think most people expected a second place showing. Are you a little surprised yourself? Um, I'm not surprised, but I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, you know, I, I thought I would end up here um, just because Bryce, you know, just finished so well. And I also finished well, but, you know, uh, you know he ended up getting, getting the number one. So uh, I'm, I'm really proud of him and, and super happy for all his, his accomplishments. So hopefully I'll see him uh, in the national championship. Take us behind the scenes a little bit, because I recall 2016 when Jabril was there, there was a nice bond and camaraderie between the guys who were up for the award. Can you tell us about that a little bit, what, what your day was like? Yeah, yeah, it was great with Bryce, CJ, and Kenny. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty funny being with uh, three different quarterbacks, and I'm the only uh, you know, defensive end who actually hits quarterbacks for a living. So um, it's, it was funny being here, but you know, we all got along well, and um, you know, it, it was great being with the guys. Can you talk about the spectacle of this event? New York City, Manhattan, the bright lights. It, it, just share that with us a little bit, your experience there. Yeah, the experience here, I mean, the venue is beautiful. Uh, I think they, they really outdid themselves. I think they should keep this venue for years to come. Um, it's, it's, it's so cool being a part of it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's such an incredible experience. So um, I'm super glad, you know, I got invited here and, and I got the uh, opportunity to um, do all the things I'm doing. You are part of Heisman history. Has this really sunk in? Because this week must have felt like a whirlwind to you. Yeah, yeah, these whole past couple of weeks have felt like a whirlwind ever since that Ohio State game. And then we won the Big Ten Championship and then I've been on the run with all these different award shows. So, you know, it's been really great. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, uh, everything will cool down for a little bit. And then we play Georgia and it wraps right back up. Aiden Hutchinson from New York City, thank you so much for the time and we'll be catching up with you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching everybody. It's a long journey, so be patient and we'll be here every step of the way with Jawan Howard and the Wolverines. We'll see you next time. 
Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest.